Hi everyone, my name is Debbie and I'm on the creative design team at Sizzix and I'm so happy that Scrapbook.com has invited me back to share with you one of the newest members of our family, our stencil and stamp tool. Now, a lot of the tools that you see out there are just stamp only, but ours has a dual purpose. It'll create a perfect image that you can actually be the artist. You start from beginning to end with beautiful colors that are up to you to decide. Now, something funny about this when I first saw it, I thought kind of reminds me of a better version of the paint by numbers, except for paint by numbers. Remember, they told you what color was number one and what color was number four. This is all up to you. So our stencils come with four stencils and they work perfectly on our stencil and stamp tool. Now this is the hummingbird and I'm gonna walk you through how it all works in a few minutes, but I also wanna go over everything that's included in the stencil and stamp tool. So you get your platform. Now the platform is the foam base which will help the tool itself not skip around or move around while you're creating your project. So with this tool, you are able to stencil and stamp. So with the stamp platform on the top, it just lifts right up and it doesn't snap, doesn't click, it just slides right in, fits perfectly into the notches here at the top. You adhere your cling stamp directly on top, lay it down on your project, stamp it, and you realize after you stamp it, darn it, the ink didn't completely cover my image, so I can just stamp it with the ink, press it down again, and it's completely perfect. It registers it directly as long as you didn't move your paper, as long as you didn't move your stamp. So let me go ahead and show you how the stencil and stamp tool works with a stencil. So I don't need this if I'm going to be stenciling. So I'm going to take that off, put it off to the side. Now it comes with a sticky grid. The sticky grid is something that you're going to need to make sure that your material that you're going to be stamping or stenciling will adhere perfectly. It's a very low tack um, adhesive sheet. Now what you want to do is you're going to peel off the adhesive backing, lay it down, and the grooves are perfectly sized on here so you'll know exactly where the stencil film will lay. It's the perfect size for the tool. There's no ridges here, but when you peel off the adhesive backing on the top, you want to save it because when you're done with this and you put your lid back on, you don't want any dust or particles to get on there or any stray die cuts or any glitter because you know with all the embossing powders that we use and all the fun projects that we create, sometimes little things get stuck on here. So as soon as you're done and you're ready to store your tool away, you want to make sure you save that one adhesive sheet from the top and put it back on and replace it with your um, stamp platform just so it'll protect it. Along with the sticky grid sheet that you'll get with your tool, you also get the adapter. Now the adapter, as you can see, it has all these individual little rectangles and they match perfectly with the notches on the top. The reason we have all the notches at the top that match perfectly with the adapter, it enables you to move your stencil throughout your project. So you can do repetitive patterns, you can move it down to a lower area of your project however you want. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how it all works. So remember, your sticky grid sheet has a low tack. It's not going to ruin your paper or any material that you're creating your project with. I'm going to be using our new heavy white smooth cardstock. It's perfect for any mixed media project that you're creating, and it's the same exact size as this platform. I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. And with the sticky grid sheet, you know that it's not going to ruin my material because it has that low tack. A great little feature of the tool also is there's this little indentation here at the top, perfect your finger little tip gets right in there and you're able to pull it up without bending it, without having to poke it with a scissor or a tweezer. So it lays down there perfectly. Now if you notice, on the stencil and stamp tool, there are no ridges here, there's no wall here. That enables me to move my paper down when I'm ready to change it if I want to position my stencil somewhere else or if I want to do more a different pattern somewhere else on my project. So I can move it. If I had those little walls here, it would create a little ridge and my paper would buckle up. So it enables me to just keep moving it straightly straight across the side of the tool without it having to have a little bump here because there's no wall or ridge or well down there. So let me go ahead and put it back here on top. And I'm going to position my tool adapter right here on the center. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with the hummingbird stencil. Now this is the hummingbird stencil. All of our stencils have four different images. You have your background which will create this kind of a washy pattern and then you have your hummingbird more of a solid image of the hummingbird, the negative space, the stencil, and then the next one is a little more detailed and then the top one is has extra detail. 
So when you see the stencils, and all the instructions are in here perfectly explained, I thought I would try and wing it without any help or any instructions, and I was so surprised at how well I created my first project. So you'll be able to see that on each of the uh, stencils, it'll tell you the number. Number one, that's your top layer. Number two, number three, and number four. And if you could tell the difference, number four, the difference on the detail is so much more than the difference on the first, sorry, the second stencil, because the first stencil is the background. So the detail is more on the final stencil. So to start with number one, I'm going to use the background because that's the one that you start with. So if I decide, oh shoot, I don't want it this far down on my paper, I'm gonna lip up, lift up my adapter and move it up there. If I want it further down, I can go ahead and move it down this way. And it locks right in and it lays right down flat on there. I want it obviously to be up a little higher, so I'm gonna put it at the top. So now that's locked and ready to go. Each of the stencils has the little holes here on top. The registration is exactly how it is on the adapter. So you go ahead and you lay it down right there on the holes and it's ready to go. As long as I don't move this, and especially as long as I don't move this, I'm able to get it evenly registered. So let me go ahead and get my ink all ready and start with the background. So you wanna remember that you're gonna start with the lightest color. So a way to remember with our stencils, you wanna start with the lightest color first and then move to the darkest color for the background because that has more detail. So when I try to remember that, I thought a good way to keep that in mind is, remember your day starts in the light and it ends in the evening, which is dark. So start your stencil in the light and your last layer will be in the darker color. So the Distress Ink color that I'm gonna be using is a Victorian Velvet. And I'm using our blending tool that is part of our um, multi-purpose tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and start blending it from the actual stencil itself, just to give it a light pressure because you don't want, like I said, to have that circular pattern as part of your stencil design. So I'm just gonna start bringing it from the sides. And you can just do it heavy as you want and lighter towards the center. You want to just be careful. Some of these images have such a detailed area that the stencil itself is really thin. So when you see that smaller piece, you just don't want to be too heavy handed because you don't want to lift it up, bend it, and it to um, change the actual design of your background. And you see some of these little, there's tiny little holes as part of the design. And like I said before, if you don't want to have the background, you just want to have the hummingbird, you don't have to do all of the layers. The background can be something completely different. So as you see, it's slowly starting to come to life. And it's always such a nice little surprise when you lift it up and you're like, wow, look what I actually made. And everybody will be so impressed. And some of the designs, some of the flowers are absolutely beautiful and it'd be a beautiful idea for you to create some design that you wanna to add to, maybe if you're doing an invitation and it's for a bridal shower, if you do the flowers and do it in the bride's colors, I mean, it makes it, gives it such a personal effect and they're so appreciative and they're just absolutely amazed that you created it yourself. So some of the parts that you'll see with the tiny, tiny holes, it gives a lot of detail when I lift it up. So like I said before, as long as I don't move my actual paper or material that I'm doing the stencil on, once I lift this up and I realize, oh shoot, I wanna do a darker area, I can put it back down and the registration is gonna be perfect. Now don't worry about these areas here where you do see some of my ink because this is the part that when I went off of the actual stencil itself, that's where the ink went. But since I'm gonna be cutting it down to size, say maybe for a card front or a decorative um, home decor type piece, then that part will be cut off. So if I had the exact size paper that I would want, then I would do it within this area of the stencil so it won't come off of it. So that's layer one. Now I'm gonna go to layer number two. Probably wanna make sure I have my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. So layer number two, like I said before, see how the, the, butter, the hummingbird itself is a lot more, um, more of a solid actual hummingbird. And as each layer gets 
um, and here it gets a little bit more detailed. So that's the final layer. So this is layer two and this is layer three and you can see the difference on the detail there. So since I haven't moved my paper, everything's going to be positioned perfectly. And the way they, the designer created the stencil, the background itself will now not be covered at all by the hummingbird. So the hummingbird is a whole new color in itself. Let's see. So let me go with this color here. I'm going to change off my foam. Put a new one on and get going with this color. Then just as before, you just want to start off off on the side. Make sure that's down because otherwise your actual stencil will lift up and it won't be a full hummingbird. So with our surfaces, our heavy cardstock like the one I'm doing now, it's available in ivory, black, cream and white. I'm using the white and it's a heavier cardstock than our normal cardstock and the good thing about it it's able to pick up any of the mediums as far as our effects range go and I will show you that at the end. It gives you a beautiful image and adds just a little whimsy to your projects in the end if you do any kind of mixed media as well as our paints. Our acrylic paints have almost like an elastic type finish to them so you can emboss them as well but they work beautifully through our stencils and I will be able to show you some of the projects at the end just so you can see some of the projects that we've created with our different effects range. So as you see, can see, I'm going to do it just a little bit heavier on the edges just to make it darker at the tips of his tail here. But not too dark because like I said before, the actual final stencil has more detail and that's the part that I want to make the darkest because it goes from light to dark. So you can kind of give it a little watercolor effect if some areas are a little darker, making it look like it blends in together. And he's all... He's all coming, he's coming to his own. So I'm going to lift that up now. This is stencil number two. How pretty is that? I'm always so amazed that I myself created something like this. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go with stencil number three. Lay that down. And it's just giving him a little bit more life, bringing a little more detail to him, his, himself. And this just has a little bit more detail. another distressed color and like I said before any of the colors that you decide you're the artist whatever you decide you know it's going to be beautiful choose your favorite colors or whatever you're creating a project for somebody choose the colors that you know that they'll like And the blending just all comes together and the final piece is, is almost a work of art. And you do it however, how heavy you want it to be. If that's your favorite color, you just do that part as heavy as you want in whichever area you want it to go on. And there's that part there. That's stencil number three. And the final stencil, the darker color, will be more detailed. Now what you want to remember to do is you want to make sure that you, especially for these, I mean I can let these sit however long, even overnight. It's amazing how well this rinses off. So what I like to normally have is a little dish of shallow, shallow dish of water, soapy water, just warm water, and as I'm done, just lay it in there. If it's the next day and I realize I didn't, just run this under water and the color just wipes off. You don't have to spray it, you don't have to wipe it, and when you and you do definitely want to dry it before because you don't want any of the leftover residue of water to drip onto your next project. So with the plastic, you just want to make sure it dries. You could dry it in between paper towels, but it just wipes right off. You don't even have to wipe it. You just want to make sure you're careful on these areas here. You don't want to bend them because it'll change the, the look of your um, stencil itself in the end. Okay, so this is the final detail. I'm going to do the darkest color. And then just gently go on the last part. And 
and the designs are perfect and they work beautifully with the stamp so I'll be able to show you that in a moment how everything just all comes together in a perfect project that you yourself has recreated and the recipient will love it whether it's for yourself or you're giving it away and you just want to make sure you're covering all of those little negative spaces of the stencil so the entire image of the hummingbird will appear So those little dots on his belly, I just want to make sure they're covered so you can see the detail in the end. And the big reveal. How beautiful is she? Or he. <laughs> I just love how that all comes together. Whichever color combination you choose, just choose from light to dark and you're all set. So that's it. If I had my little dish of water, I would just put this in there and rinse it off and I'd be good to go. Okay, so the, I've already showed you how to do the stencil part of the stencil and stamp tool. Now, how about the stamp portion? So I don't need this adapter here. I'm gonna take it off because it's not something that I need and the lid itself will not close with this fully on there. This is only when you're gonna be using a stencil. So I'm gonna put this aside and now I'm gonna go ahead and use the stamp portion. So I'm gonna take my stamp area. You wanna make sure that the grooves that you see here the markings, those are going to be on top. So you're just going to go ahead, lock this in there like that, and it's ready to go. What I want to make sure that you know is this is the part that's on top because with the grooves here, you're not going to be able to have your stamp adhere if this is on the wrong way. Because with the grooves, it doesn't adhere the stamp perfectly. It'll fall right down and then there goes your project. So make sure the grooves themselves are right on the top. And with the smooth side here, your stamp will adhere perfectly down. So I want to see, hmm, where do I want my stamp sentiment to go? So I'm using the sunny side sentiments and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my stamp is exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to position it right here with the exact stamp area onto my background that I just created with the stencil. So now that that's in place, I'm going to put this down, press, and it's all ready. I'm going to take my ink and while it's on the stamp portion, I'm just going to dab it on there. Now I'm going to purposely not do a whole lot just so you can see the reason this tool is so amazing. So I'm going to press it, stamp it. Now I noticed, darn it, the whole thing isn't completely covered. So since I haven't moved my material and I haven't moved the stamp, I know when I go ahead and lay it back down, it's going to stamp perfectly right on the exact same spot where it should be. So add a little bit more. Press it down. Perfectly covered. The image is perfectly clear and legible and it's good to go. So we know that many of you probably have stencils that are not ours and you want to still use them. Now just because we've come out with our own stencils doesn't mean that you can't use your existing stencils on our stencil and stamp tool. So we've come up with a consumable product. It's the converters. These stencil converters will convert any of your stencils that you already have to create projects onto our stencil and stamp tool with your projects that you're creating. So you get 10 individual little converters. They have an adhesive strip and the holes will match up perfectly with the adapter that is part of your tool. So I don't need this. I'm gonna lift that up. You position your little notches here wherever your project is gonna be. So with the adapter positioned on your stencil and stamp tool, you're gonna position your adapter on top and with using a stencil that you already have that's not a Sizzix stencil, you know that you don't have your notches that are going to match up, but you need it to be able to create something on your project. So we have the converter and it has an adhesive strip. The adhesive strips have the holes that will fit perfectly onto our little knobs that are already onto your project here. It snaps right down, has an adhesive strip that you're going to peel off. And just like the sticky grid, you want to keep this. So when you're all done, you can go ahead and adhere it back and lay this back down and save it for another use. They're multi-uses, you get 10 in a pack and you're able to just keep using it. I would probably just keep it on here and just since I have 10, just save it on here for whenever I'm gonna be using it. So it just positions right there on there. 
and it's ready to go. You can take your inks. Your paper is adhered down onto your sticky grid. So when you're all done and you like the results so far, go ahead, lift up your whole converter with the stencil attached and look at the beauty that you've just created. For us to make sure that you're able to use your existing stamples, we want to make sure that you have our converter so you can adhere your existing stencils onto your converter and you're ready to go to create some beautiful projects. So not only can you use layered stencils, you can also use our layered stamps and that way you can create a multi-level image onto your project. So I took off my stencil adapter because I don't need that since I'm going to be stamping and I'm going to go ahead and open this up and lay down my material. This is our heavy white cardstock. I'm going to be using our layered stencil, the sunflower. So as you can see, you can see the difference in the detail. So the back portion will be the one that you lay down first and then the detail goes on top of that. So remember, you want to use the lighter color first and then go to the darker. So this will be the stamp that I'm going to be using first. This is the full base of the sunflower. So I'm going to peel that off. I'm going to position it down where I want it to be on my card. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to the top here. So remember, this if you took this off, the top layer is the part that you can feel the actual graph grooves. This is a smooth part and it'll give you a perfect image when you're stamping. So I'm going to start with the lightest color. And we specifically love to use Ranger's Archival inks because it gives you a nice, smooth, clean, solid image. And they're perfectly, they adhere perfectly to our stamps and they wipe off and you're good to go for the next one. So I'm going to do my detail here. The first stamp isn't too detailed. It's more of the solid base image of the actual sunflower. So the beauty about our stamps for layering is I can press it down and notice that it didn't pick up the entire area. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more. And keep going until it's the image that I want. One more time. And there's a little bit of detail on this particular stamp because you see one little petal that's kind of off to the side. So don't think that you miss something because you can see by the design there that there is a space. Okay, that's exactly how I want it to be. And now I'm going to go ahead and change my next image. So the next one is a similar size, just has a little bit more detail. And I'm going to position that on there like this. You can see exactly where it's going to line up onto the petals and just maneuver it around until it's exactly where it should be. I'm going to peel this one off and I'm going to press this down and now I'm ready to go with my next layer. I'm going to use a darker color because like I said it earlier, the darker is the last layer. So as you go towards the end of your image, that's the last color. So remember that the daytime, your, your day starts in the lighter part of the day. So you're going to use the lighter color first. And it's later goes on to the darker evening. So as my image starts to be created, I'm going to make sure that I start from the lightest color and continue on to the dark with the more detail. Because if you imagine if I use the darker color first, you wouldn't be able to see the next layers as I create it. And as I see, certain spots didn't maybe get complete coverage, you know the registration is going to be perfect because I haven't moved my stamp and I haven't moved my material that I'm stamping on. And now I'm going to use this one darker side and I want to lay it down on there specifically where it should be. And you can see where the image kind of matches up to what's underneath it as you go. It's like, almost like a puzzle. So that's ready to go. Press this down. Registration is going to be perfect again. Darker color. The image shows up so pretty on here. It's a beautiful card. It's a sunflower 
but the shape of it, I mean, you could do it any old shade you'd like it to be. So there's that one. I love how it looks. I'm going to take that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the last piece. And then it'll be the darkest color, and I'm going to use a black. Close that down to adhere it to the top. Just full coverage on that stamp. One more time. And I love the detail. This stamp also comes with the leaves if you want to add that to there. So I'll, maybe I'll just go ahead and do that one last little bit. A little bit of green. A fresh sunflower in the field. Has to have a nice green shade to it. A little bit, a tiny bit of black. I just did a little light just to darken it up again. And there we have it. A beautiful piece of artwork with a layered stamp, a stencil stamp that brings the color perfectly to your project. So when you're all done with your tool, you're finished stenciling, you're finished stamping, just an easy way to store it. Now remember, you want to add that layer that you peeled off of your sticky grid sheet. Just add it on top of it just to help it prevent from any of your little extra straggly powders and glitters to stick to it and any maybe stray little die cuts or fuzzes pieces of paper. Just protects it a little bit so you can keep using this. Now if you see any kind of ink or anything on here, don't worry about it. You don't need to try to clean it off, scrub it off. This lasts for a very long time. You can do multiple 50, 60 different projects on here. It doesn't go bad as long as you continue to protect it. But like I'd said earlier, we have a consumable product. It's the Sticky Grid Sheets, a pack of five. So you're able to create multiple projects because each sheet lasts a very long time. So to store it when you're all done, remember to adhere that one adhesive sheet that you pulled off just to keep it on top. And then go ahead and lay the top notches right there on top. Close it up and store it and you're good to go for your next fun project to create. So let me show you some of the projects we've already created with the stencil and stamp tool. This is the hummingbird that I had used earlier, using it with a card folded in half. So what we had done is we kept the card fully open, not scored yet, and went ahead and created the entire project. Stamped it FDN, changed the color tone, and look how pretty that is. It's a great little thank you card. And with a beautiful rainbow tone using the Ranger Distress Oxides, this one has created a color story that's absolutely beautiful, a great project for you to send to a friend.